NFL questions themselves. A series where you can ask me any NFL question and we answer it in a video just like this. Now, if you want to be part of it, just send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. And if you want to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. And if you don't want to, that's fine as well. I still gonna love you regardless. We got some fire questions like we always do. Let's jump right into it. First question came from my guy Clarence, and he said, coaching like fired coaches. I figured Lamar was gone for the remainder of the season. I also believe all the players are protesting injuries at the coaching staff. The coaching staff is coaching like fired coaches. Eric might be on the hot seat because he did not get the O-line right with the draft. It's... Eric ain't on the hot seat. Eric DaCosta is not on nobody's hot seat at all. There's, there's no way. But anyway... Um, he said, I think Lamar won MVP with Ozzy's offensive line picks. Lamar is Ozzy's pick. Sorry for the long message, but it needs saying. The Ravens never will fire coaches during the season. Once the entire coaching staff is fired, all the injured players will be healed. What do you think, Mr. Answer Guy? Tell Cardin the dog who thinks they are little. I said hi. LOL. Appreciate it. Um, so you're saying that you think players are protested, protesting injuries, so they're, they're, they're acting like they're injured, I mean, they're acting like they're injured in order to protest the coaching staff so they don't got to play for them. Um, I would hope not because that could end up hurting the player. Uh, not necessarily more than anything, but it could end up hurting the player just as much as it hurts the coach. Because, especially depending on your contract situation and whatnot, depending on your status. Like, if, if you are willing to give up an opportunity just because you don't want to play for that coach uh that that's that's very uh gutsy of you but at the same time uh you could be messing yourself up for the future and these coaches around the league they are tight they talk a lot of times it's a lot of coaches that just get recycled in and out um so they are very familiar with each other and if you and, and, if they, and if, if they know, like, oh, he ain't really injured, he just don't want to play for me, they'll go tell the next coach, that coach will tell the next coach. That tell, and that, that won't necessarily stop you from every opportunity, but it could hinder some for sure. Next question came from Sabri. He said, what's good in Graven? Hope you and your family are healthy and blessed. I don't know if it's just me, but why did the Ravens simplify the playbook for both Huntley and Johnson? But with Lamar, he has all these long development routes and complex routes that aren't working. I know Lamar needs to get the ball out of his hands more quick, but... It doesn't help when you don't help Lamar and simplify the game plan. Also, all of a sudden, I see the up-tempo offenses used more early with Huntley and Josh, but not Lamar. Like, I honestly don't get why Lamar, we wait to the last second to run up-tempo, but with our backups, we help them out and use it right out the gate. I might sound crazy, but I truly believe the Ravens are purposely not helping Lamar just so they can lower his price value when they pay him. Just think about it. Rarely do you even see a deep shot attempted or routes being ran by the receivers when Huntley and Josh are in there, but with Lamar, you have all these complex routes in the, in the simplified game plan, which makes the other quarterbacks look better. All I want to know is why do you think Giro and the staff don't look to have the short stuff and up-tempo offense with Lamar, and do you think they are purposely not helping him? Hope you have a great one and stay blessed. Now, for the part about them purposely like sabotaging him and whatnot, I would hope that that's not true, and that could, if that was the case, that could absolutely backfire big time against the Ravens. Um, Lamar, he... He's not the type to do it, but he has the power to where he could, and it would speak volumes to the league if he was to let something like that be known. And if he really didn't want to re-sign with the Ravens, if they try to get him for cheap and be like, oh, look at this, look at that, look at that, look, look what you did in 2021, um, then he could make that backfire and be like, ah, okay, no, I, instead, when they try to offer, if they try to offer him something low, try to save some of their cash, then he could be like, no, I don't, I don't want to play here anymore. I don't want to be here anymore. I want to be traded. Ooh, boy, Matt. Ooh, that would just send shockwaves around the entire league. Not even the league, the world. If Lamar said he ain't want to play for the Ravens anymore. Ooh, boy. So they, if if that was the case, or what? If if they were doing that, it would it would backfire in a huge way, in a huge way, and it would just make the not only the coaching staff look bad, but the Ravens organization, it would make them look bad. Because it, w it just wouldn't be smart for them to do that. This is one of the reasons why people get so frustrated with Greg Roman because they see like, man, we are capable of moving the ball. 
with our receivers, with our tight ends. We, we are capable of calling some good plays, some good games, scoring points. We are more than capable of that. So why haven't we been doing it consistently? Next question came from Rich Boy James. He said, do you think the 14-2 and two season was our best chance to take it all the way? Or do you think it was our last chance to ever come close to how great that team was? Uh, best chance, I would say yes, but not only chance. Not only chance. Best chance, though, yes. Um, but every year you got a shot. And the, the way that they built this roster this year was an amazing roster, but we all know what happened. And he said, do you think it was our last chance to ever come close to how great that team was? No, not our last chance, no. Crazy season, man. Easy to get caught up with thinking the window was closing. Just feels like we gave the season away with those two-point conversion calls. Mm. Ooh, those certainly had a huge impact on this season. They certainly did, and y'all know how I feel about them already. I do not feel like they were smart. Um, the, the one that I could understand the most, maybe not even the Steelers game. Uh, at least they called a good play call for the Steelers game one. Uh, but... I just, y'all y'all already know how I feel about that. I don't even feel like getting into it, man. But this, like, you, with those, you had an opportunity. Um, and this not even hindsight being 2020. This, y'all know, I was saying this from jump. They had an opportunity. To, they were in all of those games. And you could have kicked the field goal and, and, and gave your, your offense or defense a chance to make something happen. But with those two-point conversions, it's either, it's either all or nothing. It's all or nothing right then and there. You don't got no chance, no coin flip, no coin toss. No, you, you ain't got no. It's it's all or nothing. And I just felt like they they were hoping that it would work out. I uh, I just I didn't see the reasoning, man. I just I I, I didn't get it. Um, but the, and of course there's the injuries too. Um, but again, injuries like injuries have been a huge part of this season. But you. Those three games right there, even if, even if you would have went to over, say you went to overtime with all three, and you won one and lost two, or you won two and lost one, or you won all three, or you lost all three, but I just, ah, that, the situational play calling for me, man. Nah, not even just deciding to go for two, but a lot of the situational play calling has just had me scratching my head all year. Um... And it's especially late in the season. It's like you would expect, at least me in my opinion, I would expect as the season goes on that, all right, coaches are getting more comfortable. They're getting more in rhythm. They're getting more in sync. And it's like, all right, we got it. We know what to do in this situation. But it seems like it, for me, it's going in reverse. It's like it's going in reverse. It's like, what? why is the situational play calling almost getting worse? So it, it, it's just been a crazy season. It's, it's been a lot of frustration. It's just been a lot of um, a lot of everything. A lot of good. A lot of bad too. Um, that's why. That's why what they sitting at eight and seven right now. So it's almost just as much good as bad. Next question came from my guy Jay Lee. He says, so throughout the season we've seen backup running backs go off for a hundred yard rushing games, such as Craig Reynolds, Dante Foreman, Dearness Johnson, and Duke Johnson. These guys only have one to two starts this season. No one besides Lamar has achieved a hundred yard rushing game, and he's done so twice. I know we've been passing the ball a lot more than last season, but knowing that we have Giro at the helm and also knowing that zero of our running backs have rushed for over 100 yards in a game doesn't sit right with me. My question is, why do you think we haven't had a running back surpass 100 yards rushing? Uh, could it be a pers personnel issue or coaching issue? The coaches choose to continue playing Freeman and Murray because they're experienced, but watching these backups have big games makes me wonder why we haven't had a running back with a big running game yet. Um, offensive line... Uh, that will be an issue right there. Uh, the, 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 the lack of explosiveness from the running backs we do have. Devontae Freeman, he's been getting more and more comfortable. But um, them doghousing Tyson Williams, he, I, I'm, I'm sure, like, especially the offensive line now, even though they're still a bit rough, but he, he, he could get one. He could get one. I feel like it would be easier for him to get one than it would be for the other two because he got a lot more explosiveness than those guys. Tyson could definitely get one, for sure. Um, but he's in the doghouse for whatever reason and it's still very, very crazy. I'm, I'm even surprised that he was still on the team. I thought at the trade deadline they were going to get rid of him by the way that they were just keeping him out. But they held on to him and it's, it's almost like a punishment, man. That's what it seems like. It's almost like a punishment. But I think it's also um, the uh, 
I can't even say that like as an excuse like how, how non-familiar they are with the the team and the the, the, the scheme and all that. I just Ravens can't they they haven't been running the ball very well this year. Um and yeah, they just they lack explosiveness. That's it. The running backs lack explosiveness. Even with the offensive line, sometimes there'll be holes in the running backs. They'll try, but they just can't get it. Sometimes they bounce to the outside and they try, but it just it don't always work out so well. So I, I think it's just a mix of things, but um this is not to me, it's not necessarily a, a Greg Roman issue. Uh, well, sometimes if he, if like Devontae Freeman is hot, then it'll go to Latavius Murray and it like flip flop. But, um, they just, I think it's the, the running back by committee too. But at the same time, you only got two running backs. You only got two. Because you don't use Tyson. And then you had Lamar running, you had Tyler Huntley running, you dread to have Josh Johnson running. That was a big no no. But they just, uh, I don't know. They, 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 they gotta be, yeah, I, th this year, as far as the running game, I feel like it's just a wash. Next question came from my guy, Everett. He said, sending this with five minutes left in the Bengals game. Well, we found our third QB. Though we lost, I feel offensively this was a moral victory for the offense and not including Giro, LOL. Can't take no moral victories. They, well, they ain't gonna get you to the playoffs. But anyway, he said, I saw playing time from some big dogs today. Andrews, 8 for 125 in the touchdown. Bateman, 4 for 26. Thought he would get more. Had a great first drive. And the bully pro trade was 7 for 76. Brown, 5 for a petty 44. Didn't hold much weight. And Wallace, 1 for 18. I've seen all I need to see setting up for next year as far as wideouts. Uh, they are guys. Watkins gone and Boykin probably gone. Uh. But the way Proche played made me feel like he was a number two wide, with Brown being a slot and Bateman being a number one. We need to run less RPO and more fast-paced defense plays. Oh, and more fast-paced. Defense plays us different, and our quarterbacks are more accurate and quicker decision-making. Right, right. Uh, great job to Burrow uh, stressing the Netflix secondary, because they was just watching and chilling. <laughs> this guy, man. Uh, I don't know how practice goes, but Lamar needs to practice with Bateman and Wallace and Proche. Um, cause they play angry, and I honestly feel like one is coming for Hollywood's spot. Mm. Uh, I, I don't see that happening. It'd be nice to get all of them involved more, though. But I don't see them, like, taking Hollywood's spot. They, I mean, they do enough little rotating anyway, to where they, they'll take Hollywood off for a little bit, they'll take Bateman off for forever, and they'll take Proche off for a while, they take Duvernay off for a little bit. But they do a lot of rotating already, so they will be able to get some time. Uh, now on defense, 80% won't be back, so no need to worry, LOL. I do see a Jefferson contract for two years, but Campbell in Houston, going to retirement. Well, Campbell, I think he could. Uh, Justin Houston, maybe. We'll see. I don't know. But anyway, he said, but as a Ravens fan, I know this is the most painful season to watch, but we did great this year for real. This is what being from Baltimore is all about. What are you going to do when the odds are stacked against you, and you got to figure it out? A lot of positive to take away from the season. A lot of negative, too. Uh, it's all right, Flock. We got heart, and it was next man up to everybody that played the snap. We thank you. But next year, the Goon Squad will be back in full effect with a chip. We got robbed this year. It's okay. Flocking up. We're going to see. We're going to see. Um, it, it, this, this, there was a lot of positives to take away from this season. It's not over yet. Um, a lot of positives, a lot of stuff that could be improved on, uh, a lot of negatives. A lot of just everything. This has been a just very a, 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 a different season. Like this has been being crazy because going into the season, the expectations were so high. As the season continued, the expectations they remained high, but they kept getting lower and lower and lower with every single injury that the Ravens just kept getting. Sorry, camera died, but the fact that the Ravens are in the position that they're in right now, it speaks volumes. But the fact that they're in the position right now, it also speaks volumes, and, and that can be taken in both a great. In a terrible way. The last question came from Jamie B. Say here. Hope you and the family are doing well. I got two questions. How much does it take to get your game rescheduled like other teams dealing with COVID? I don't know. You got to know somebody that knows somebody. Um, the Browns starting center. He is the president of NFLPA, so he probably put in a little word. Uh, and they said, and how many guys, practice squad, and late signups do you think made a winning audition for next year's Ravens squad? P.S. I still believe in this team making the playoffs. Hey, I hope it happens, but we'll see. Um, how many guys made a case for making it next year? Uh, I think Devontae Freeman. Um, I think he would be one. Um, uh, mm, 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 mm. Um, Josh Johnson, 
for the uh, like for training camp and stuff. Uh, now nah, they wouldn't keep him on the active roster because uh, he'll uh, they will have Lamar and possibly Tyler Huntley if uh, depending on what they do with him. And Josh Johnson, he could retire too. We'll see. Um, Kenji Baha, he deserves it. He, he like he deserves it because uh, they back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, who else? All the wide receivers, they already on the team. Um, all the tight ends, well. Actually, all the tight ends might not be here. Mark Andrews, obviously, but we'll see about the other ones. Uh, Nick Boyle, he'll probably be here. Hopefully, he'll be healthy then. Mm, oh, David Sharp. David Sharp, right tackle. I, I know it was only one game, but David Sharp. Um, and Geno Stone, maybe for depth. Uh, as far as cornerbacks, no. They, they definitely moving in a way different direction with everybody at cornerback. But yeah, that one, that's the only thing I can, that's the only one I can really think of, but yeah, that'd probably be it. And you know just what I mean, you two team keep it clean, you see my boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it, boy that's my homie, ain't that right engraving, right engraving. Shout out to Graven.